So that way you can actually get the recording. I will do the replay within 24 hours. So you will have that sent to your email. So the whole point of tonight is to show you several ways you can win a contract without bidding. That is the key. So I'm gonna share the PowerPoint presentation and get us started and then share my screen so we can look at a couple of contracts and ways that we need to do. So this is all about no bidding, how to find no bidding government cleaning contracts, which is really important because this will allow you to do both. So what I'm gonna show you guys tonight is um, how to do the bidding. And then I'm gonna share with you my screen tonight. We're gonna look to see if we see any uh, contracts that are for bidding as well. I'm gonna share my screen with you. We'll take a look. Hopefully by tonight, we will find something for each one of you. That's my goal. So I'm going to keep you on here for right at about an hour and um, we're going to get started. So we're going to look at three main ways. One of them I haven't put up here um, and that is going to be expiring contracts. Contracts that are expiring are a great source of finding because you know when they're expiring, you know how much they cost, and I'm going to show you that as well. So we're going to look at three things, micro purchases and simplified acquisition procedures, which are SATs. I put in source to sod notices. That's not really a no bid type of contract, but what it does, it sets you up perfectly with the contracting officer to be able to not have to bid. So I'm going to show you that as well. So 70% of the governments are done through micro purchases. I myself won a micro purchase, actually three. Now, what is a micro purchase? A micro purchase is when a government agency can use their credit card to pay for your services and they simply swipe the card and they pay for it and you receive the money the same day. Now, this is gonna be informal, so after I go over something, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, if you have a lot of background noise, didn't put it back on mute, but it's, it's a workshop. So that means we're working. We're not just listening. We're going to do some working. So I want to answer questions. I want to make sure by the time you guys get done, you know exactly what you need to do to find a no bid, and you might be able to find one within a week. So the average person finds a contract in 18 months. We have focused hard in getting you a contract within three to six months. That is the definite time frame that we look at having you obtain a contract. Now, those of you who have been doing this for a while, right. you know that, I'm sorry, is there a question? Um, I'm okay. Can you mute the phone if you have background noise, please? Okay. For those of you who have been doing this for a while, if you live in an area where there are very few bids available, then I wanna to talk to you about doing something that I've had two people do and they've done it successfully. One, you can sell supplies, no bid supplies and equipment. Number two, you can do business in another state or city. So don't let the availability of the contracts or not having any contracts around you stop you from being able to win government, no bids or bidding. So micro purchases, are goods or services up to $10,000. Now there are certain agencies I'm gonna show you that use micro purchases more than anything else. And I'm gonna show you how to forecast, how to look out in your state to see where and what they're looking to purchase. So that's a lot of the research that people don't know how to do, which allows you to find more. So micro purchases is really great. The one thing you have to be is registered in SAMS. So let me see in the chat, anyone that is not registered in SAMS. Okay, so all of you, I'm assuming, make sure I have this correct. Hold one second for me. So all of you, I'm assuming, are registered in SAMS, right? Give me a yes. Let me hear some yeses. So everyone, I'm assuming, is registered in SAMS. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right, yes, good, good. So yes, 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 good, good. Want to make sure that everyone is registered in SAMS because you do have to register SAMS. Now, the second question is, do you guys remember when you were registering in SAMS and you were on the part that talked about 
the HCH deposits and how you had to put your bank information in there. Do any of you remember that you had to select, do you accept credit cards? So make sure you remember that you selected yes. So let me see. Yes, okay. So all of you remember and you selected yes. Now the other thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you are set up to, to accept credit cards. Wanna make sure your companies are set up to accept credit cards. Now, throughout this presentation, I've got a slide that talks about what banks accept credit cards, some don't. Now, you wanna make sure you're set up as a merchant account. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail with that. And you cannot go through a third party. You can't use PayPal, none of that. You have to have it set up with your bank. That's the most important part, no PayPals, None of those other third parties they're going to accept. It has to be directly with your bank. So we're going to get a little bit into that uh, as far as making sure you're, you guys are all set up. So micro purchase, $10,000 must, the requirements must be registered with SAMS and must accept government credit cards. Okay. Now, I love the Merck micro purchases because I've used them throughout. They're really great for quick cash infusion. They will use you for dusting. They may need the parking lot cleaned up and especially during the months of August and September. So I'm showing you this now so you can be ready to pounce in during the months of August and September because that is the end of the government fiscal year. And the government fiscal year gives money like it's crazy around those two months. More people win contracts in the month of September than any other time because the government uses the money they need in the beginning of the fiscal year, which is October. As the months go on, they realize they have more money left. They don't want to keep the money because if they keep it, they won't get a good budget the next year. If you have $2 million left in your, in your account, they're going to assume you didn't need all the money. So they're not going to give you as much money, and they know that. So it's an ongoing rule that you spend every dollar you get. So if I need to make sure I save money for the beginning of the fiscal year, and as the year goes on, we all know that. We need to save money for our mortgage, our rent, our food, all the things. Well, after we see what we have left, what do we do? We have fun. We go buy things we really don't need. At least that's what I hope we're doing. That's the way the government is. The government buys things that they do not need as much, and that includes janitorial. So that is one of the reasons why you wanna make sure you have all your I's dotted, T's crossed. We're gonna talk about capability statements. I'm gonna show you what you need to do for your slideshow presentation. And that way you're gonna make sure that you have everything ready. Making sure you have your website. Is there anyone on here that does not have a website? Let me see in the chat if you do not have one because you absolutely wanna have a website, um, absolutely don't wanna not have your website. So everyone has a website, perfect. Does everyone have their capability statement on their website in some form, whether it's a page, whether you download it, but it should be a capability statement should be on your website. So everyone has that on there. Okay, I click yes, yes, not yet. Okay, Brianna, um, make sure you do. Make sure if you have any problems, you know, you can call me, but make sure you put your capability statement onto your website. And um, yes, okay, got it. So uh, reach out, let me know, because we want to make sure we get that capability statement on there, okay? Um, so now, the very first no bid is micro purchases, $10,000. I haven't shown you what you do to get one. I'm going to show you that. The next one, is acquisitions, it's called a SAP. A SAP is a simplified acquisition procedure. That means no contracts and they can, they, a contracting officer, that is the person that is the one that can bind the contract. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what that looks like from the beginning to the end after I finish with the SAP. A simplified acquisition must, by law, and I think this was put into place in 1968, they must use small businesses. We are considered a small business as long as you're making under $19,500 in revenue a year, okay? That's all of us. 
So if we're making less than that, we're considered a total small business. That's what it's called. You automatically become a total small business if in your SAMS, you clicked yes. Now it's already set up for a yes, so you don't have to do anything, but I hope you remember that you saw it said total small business and you click yes. If there's, if there's someone here that's not sure, then you wanna make sure you go through your SAMs on tomorrow and have that you're listed as a total small business. If that is correct, that means that you're able to win contracts without any bidding from $3,000 to $250,000. So let's kind of look at how that process works. I am a contracting officer. I need someone to do janitorial landscaping windows in the state of Texas, Florida, North Carolina, all these different places. I don't want to put it out for bid. 40% of the bids are never listed. They're not anywhere we can find them. And you know how they're found. They're found through our introduction letter. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do in order to reach out to that contracting officer. Let's say I'm a contracting officer. I've got this bid. It's in my basket. And I don't want to list it on any bid platform. I want to give it to someone. But who am I going to give it to? Because I haven't had anyone send me anything to let them know, to let me know they're interested. The whole goal is to end up building that relationship with that contracting officer. If you do that, I've done it. I've had other people that have done it. You don't have to worry about bidding as much as you would if you don't. So what are the things you do to build the relationship with the contracting officer? Well, the first thing we're going to look at is, let's get out of the slideshow presentation. The first thing we're going to look at is we are going to look at our introduction letter. Now, this introduction letter is very, very important. Everyone should have an introduction letter. And this evening, we're going to make sure that you have a copy of an introduction letter. For those of you that have gone through the government class, you've already have one. For those of you that have not, then I'm going to make sure you get this introduction letter tomorrow. Now, what do we need to put in our introduction letter? Our introduction letter is going to have, dear contracting officer, you may know their name in a minute, we'll go through a couple of agencies that do micro purchases and simplified acquisition procedures. We're gonna narrow it down to what agencies that do it the absolute most. And then we're going to look at where we're gonna to look to send them, okay? So 70% of the bids that are simplified acquisition and micro purchases are done in Veteran Affairs, Homeland Security, and so Veteran Affairs, Homeland Security, and the third one is the Department of Agriculture. Those are the top three that do a lot of no bids. So, and one more, FEMA. So I've given you four, FEMA, Homeland Security, Department of Agriculture, and Veteran Affairs. Write those down on your, should have your worksheet so you can take notes, write it down because that's where we're sending our introduction letter. Now, the thing you wanna talk about is this is a pretty general one. All of you have been with me long enough know that I really harp on that differentiator. So I wanna see, is there anyone on here that does not have where we talk about this one? It says, Dear Contracting Officer, I am Victoria, CEO of Encore Services Group. We're a small business that specializes in providing single solution janitorial services. Our main goal it goes into what we're looking at doing. This is where you're going to put your differentiator. We're a small business that specializes in pure care clean or OxyClean or green clean. And then you're going to go into what the results are. The results are our customers have been able to decrease their call out rate by 90% or we've reduced the allergens in the air. So we want to have a, a, a result. I would love it if you could think of three. So let's look at doing that introduction letter. Who here already has their introduction letter crafted? It's ready and there's no question. Let me know in the chat if you already have it you feel comfortable with it and you're ready to go because I wanna make sure that I help you tonight come up with a differentiator. Let's see, yes, I have one. 
Yes, it's ready. I need one. Okay. So everyone else, you guys are good. You have your introduction letter. Everyone else is good. Um, you don't need one. Okay. We want to make sure there's five things that are different about a business. Number one, if you could do something quicker, see who the other person is. Okay. I need one. Okay. So you're going to get this template. It's going to be sent to you, but let's look at what we can do. And I want you to personalize it to fit your personality. I have sinuses and it would be hard for me when I go into office, it's dusty and dirty to breathe. So one of the things that I really focused on was cleaning the air, having the air clean. And we purchased a clean system. It was a purifier from Home Depot that purified the air. And we we actually purchased a, a, a like a little monitor that we set on the different desks when we would walk in and we would talk about what the name of it was. It was called Pure OxyClean. And so we have this Pure OxyClean system. We created the name. You want to name your differentiator. Do not not have a name. Don't just call it a clean air system. Call it something that is unique. You create the name. That way no one else has it. Why is that important? Because I teach you how to scale your business to six to seven figures and then sell it. Whether you sell it later, you leave it as a legacy, you want it to be valued worth some millions of dollars. That's the goal. So we want to talk about starting and selling and scaling and selling. You will notice that a lot of businesses have things trademarked. You can trademark that individual name that you create that's your differentiator, and it costs maybe a couple of hundred dollars. I'm here in Virginia. We go to the trade patent trade office. You can do it online. It has gotten very accessible. So anyone that wants to know about trademarking a little bit later, I will direct you to where to go. But right now, the first step is to think of a name, write down some ideas, and that's the first thing. Once you do that, you want to research. What does it solve? So the first thing that a lot of people like is speed. Can you come up with a training method or equipment that's going to cut time? Save people time. People love that. Number two, people want something that's going to be a guarantee. You can have a customer care guarantee where you give them an, a, a refund or you invoice them, um, give them a, you give them like something back for if they find something and you don't correct it within 24 hours. That's number two. People love guarantees and they love where there's something that they feel is, is a speed. Number three, some people like something that is different, meaning not everyone can have it. They want to feel like it's a one of a kind. So if you create some kind of system that's not out there, it could be a system when it comes to how you train your employees. It could be something that you create with putting chemicals all together and create some kind of organic cleaning potion. So those are the things. The other thing people love safety, especially government. They want to know you, you've you got an outstanding safety record or name your safety program. My blank safety program has allowed us to have a zero um, problem with safety. Remember I said name three results. So I really want you to work hard on this part. I am Victoria, CEO of Encore Services Group. We are a small company that specializes in providing pure, clean, oxyclean, which results in reduced absenteeism. It increases your, um, your, it, your it, it reduces your insurance. People that have science problems spend a lot of money on their company's dime. The, the fifth thing that I could think of is that people like to save money. If you're doing any of the five, think of anyone that you really patronize. Chick-fil-A, what are they known for? Great customer service and speed. People love great customer service. They want to know about safety. They want to know you're either doing something quicker, they're, given, they're getting a guarantee, and you're saving them money. Those are around the five that you want to put, and you want to personalize it with your own name. You can't think of a company that doesn't have some kind of name, Jiffy Lube, Quick Lube or something. Everyone, they don't just say, we change your oil. No, that sounds like everyone. So I want you to think of a program, start jotting down some ideas and implement it. Because like I said, time is of the essence. We want to get situated. So by the time August 1st gets here, we are hitting these agencies and we're getting swipe cards, getting micro purchase for $10,000. And we are setting ourselves up to have start building that relationship now with that contracting officer because they've got 
they trust me, they've got some bid solicitations in their little basket that they're going to be able to make sure that they have for you. So before we move on, is there anyone that has a question at all when it comes to what they should come up with with a differentiator? Because that's the gist of everything. This works when you're able to build the relationship with the contracting officer because they're the ones that give you the they give it to you. They're the ones that award it to you. So trust me, that's what you want to make sure you do. Are there any questions at all on what it should look like, what they need, what you need to do, or any of the five areas that I talked about that's going to make sure that you're able to, to do a really good job with that? Anything at all? Okay. So I will send this out to everyone. I'm going to make sure I let you know the five areas again, send that out to you. And I really want you guys to have that within a week. That's my, that's like my little homework assignment for you is to make sure you have it within the week. All right. So now let's go to the next thing. The next thing is we all know that the way it works is once you're able to build that relationship, every one of you should have what we call a capability briefing. Now, a capability briefing is different than a capability statement. It's similar, but it's a PowerPoint. So this is one of the capability briefings. I wanna make sure that each and every one of you have a capability briefing. We can send out the PowerPoint presentation so that way you have it. So this capability briefing is the way this goes. The contracting officer has a bid that they're not putting out there on the platform. I'm gonna show you the platform tonight. We're gonna to look for bids for each one of you to see if we can find one tonight. No bids and bidding. We're gonna look at both. Once I have the, um, once I've got this solicitation, I'm not gonna put it out for bid. I'm then gonna start looking to see who I've got a relationship with. I'm gonna email you and tell you that I've got a bid solicitation. I'm gonna send you all the information and I'm going to see if you're interested. If you are, I will send you an award letter. An award letter says I am awarding you the contract. Trust me, it is that simple. Now, the key is to get your foot in the door. That's the key, but the process is simple. One of the things they may wanna do is when you send that introduction letter, they may then send you an email and they may ask you to do a PowerPoint presentation. They may have other people who are the end user. End user. So the end user is the agency. The agency, not just the contracting officer, but the agency, let's say veteran affairs, they can also say who they want. Trust me. So the contracting officer is one person, but that agency who is the end user can also tell the contracting officer, I want that company. So you can build relationships with the agency and the end user, both. And you can get a micro purchase and you can get a simplified acquisition procedure. $10,000 is the highest for the micro purchase. 250,000 is the highest for the staff. Those two, no bidding. So I want you guys to look at things you could put. This is Miss Kimberly. She um, started doing all her stuff. These are the things that she is, a woman-owned, hub certified. Um, she's gone on to do some great things. She was one of our clients. So just kind of look at this. You can edit it because I'm sending it to you guys. So let me just see in the chat, is there anyone say yes if you have a capability briefing on PowerPoint? So let's see. Yes, okay, good, real good. Yes, yes, great. So there's two of you that, that have it. There are, there are several of you that need it. So uh, Miss Cynthia, do you have yours? Miss Cynthia, do you have your PowerPoint? And no, I don't. Okay, all right. So this will come out to you as well. Um, I think it's like 10 Thank page. You. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Cynthia? Did you say something else? Okay. I said, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So I will send this out to everyone. So the way it goes is you just wanna simply talk about um, your company. This is her company overview. She talks about um, her, her janitorial software that she uses. She, she uses the combat cleaning training. That's, I know there's some other people that use that. Um, so you get a chance to kind of get an idea. 
what I would suggest you do is go online, Google cleaning companies in my area that do government cleaning. Check out your competition. Write down things that they do and things that they don't do. So if everyone in your year area is using combat cleaning, you might not want to just use that only as your, your differentiator. You want to add something else to sweeten the pot. So check out your competition. That's going to let you know exactly who and what is what someone's doing. Always know what your competition is. Very, very important. Okay. She has her, her same day guarantee. Um, she talks about sending out thank yous. And then she has her contact information. So the way you look at it is, if you send the introduction letter to a couple of the contracting um, uh, agencies that we're going to look at, they like what you show them. They look at your website. They look at your capability statement. And then they ask you via email if you would do similar to what we're doing right now. Would you like to be invited to a capability briefing? And you're going to be the star. And they're going to invite several other people who are going to be there excuse me i have people that want to come late and i you know i i try to make sure i give people enough time but i'm not going to stop you know again i can't stop what i'm doing um so you're going to make sure that you have so they're going to invite you have other agencies there so remember i had i said they have you know there are several key people key players in this government one is a contracting officer two is their contracting specialist, that's the person that helps them. And number three is the end agency. And if you get in good with the end agencies the same way, sending introduction letters, going to a lot of the conferences, there are a lot of conferences you can attend. So make sure you start looking at the networking opportunities in your area. So are there any questions at all on the capability statement? I mean, on the capability briefing. So we know that there is a capability narrative that's with the dynamic small business search. There is a capability briefing, and then there's the capability statement. All three of those are different. Are there, is there any question or confusion on that? Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and look at one of the ways that we are going to make sure, let's see if I can get it up here. This is one of the ways that we're going to make sure that we look at SAM. So let's See if we've got it. I think it's right here. I hate when it does that. It comes down. So we're going to just go right here. And this is how we're able to forecast the business opportunities. And they also have fiscal year 2022, which is now available because we're in fiscal year 2022. This is the OSDABU, the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. This is for the one department that I told you about the UD, USDA, that's the United States Department of Agriculture. Now, you can simply come here and you can go to the forest. The forest, if you guys have ever seen the, um, when you're driving along and you've seen where, when you're driving along, you have seen where you have the rest stops. So the rest stops are a part of the forest service. So I can click Let's say I click right here and I want to know, and it gives you the states. This is going to let me know every, um, it's going to give me the NICS codes that, and I can put janitorial in here and I'm going to send you the, the, the step-by-step on how to do that. Well, what I love by this is I can put janitorial on here. It's going to give me the state and it's going to give me the ladies contact information or the gentleman. I'm going to be able to see these are the NICS codes right here. So I can see by looking at this NICS code, I can look for 56172 or whatever my NICS code is. I can then see how many, what quarter they're going to need us, what department and what organization. And I've got the contact information. So I can simply go onto the OSDABU. I can go into the procurement forecast. Every agency has one. And I'm going to show you exactly where it is. It's on SAM.gov. So give me in the chat, did anyone know that they could go into SAM.gov and they could find the procurement and the forecast for any of the agencies and they can actually see, okay, there's going to be a lot in my state. I'm going to reach out to this contracting officer so that I can 
right? So that's one of the things that I want you guys to know. This is how you find it. You got to do a little wiggle room and that's the thing. So, okay, Miss Miss um, Akisha, yes, good. So the contact information's here. You're going to email them that what? Introduction letter. So we know that we're going to find one in our next code. We're going to then know it's in our, it even goes down to the city. So, you know, like if you're looking for something in, uh, you know, it's got varies, it varies. If you're looking something in Colorado and you know that this gentleman's there and you know it's got your next code, you know this is a really good opportunity for you to reach out. So we are going to look at, this is where it's going to be under acquisition.gov. So you're going to go under acquisition.gov and you're going to be able to look at all of the agencies. It's got small business, business opportunities, vendor communication, and it even has the agency liaison directory, everything you need. So let's say you're interested in Department of Health and Human Services. You click right on there. Now, we already know that the Department of Health and Human Services is one of the ones that use us a lot. We know that Homeland Security does. But what I would do, I would take a Saturday and I would go through every one of these agencies. I would take like three at a time. And it's going to give you a list of what, what they're forecasting. And you'll be able to tell that this is going to use my NICS code a lot. And then get busy sending that introduction letter. The, the rhythm for the intro letter is going to be every two weeks. Now, if you've got several agencies, switch them around and keep it on a calendar so you know who all you've sent it to. And start looking to get some feedback. Now, this is what I suggest you do. Send three or four out. Take a pause, see if you get something back. If you're not getting any feedback, then you want to look at your introduction letter. Send, to, send them to me, send them to my team, because I want to make sure I look at them if, you have, if you're not getting any feedback. Because if they're forecasting in your area, you can narrow it down to your city. You know your NICS code. You've got their email address. There's no reason why you're not going to start getting feedback. So are there any questions about coming on to acquisition.gov? All the agencies are listed here. They're going to give you the forecast and you're looking for your next code. Are there any questions at all on how you're going to do this? Let me know in the chat before we move on. Okay, so everyone understands what they're doing when it comes to finding. Okay, I'm good, good. So everyone understands what it looks like. So this is one of the ways you're going to find the micro purchases. One of the main agencies that you're going to find the micro purchases are going to be Department of Health and Human Services, Homeland Security, HUD, agriculture, almost all of these are going to have micro purchases and a lot of them are going to have the simplified acquisition purchase. So do not be shy. Start using this and look at all of it. Look at all the small business, business opportunities. Look at all of this. They've got a lot for you. So that's the first thing that we're going to look at. The next thing we're going to look at is we're going to go ahead and go on to Sam. Let's see What's this. Here we go. Now, the next thing is called sources sought. People don't realize how much of an opportunity is when it comes to sources sought. Sources sought, you're going to go to sam.gov, and then you're going to simply put in the notice type, and you're going to go to, when you put in the, the, the notice type, you're going to click on the sources sought. And this is bringing up the sources sought. So what, does anyone know what sources sought is before I get into it? Does anyone in, put in the chat if you know what it is? Okay, let's see. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no, you know, okay. Sources sought is when this is a sources sought only. No solicitation is currently available. All information contained in the sources sought is going to be announced. So let's say, for instance, someone is looking at doing the youth center janitorial and closet doors. They may be looking for someone to paint or whatever it is. This is an act of sources sought. It is, you see what it says, is sources sought. The date that they want to respond, it was on the 23rd, but they moved it to the 28th. That's when it's going to become an active. Remember, we're looking for original set aside. You only want to do something that is blank or if it has total small business. If you're not a woman-owned business, 
and it has W, you know, WOSB or veteran or 8A, you can't do it. So make sure when you're looking for this, there's nothing there or it says total small business, which is what I said we all are, as long as we make under 19 million 500. We know that we wanna look now, this is a NICS code for 332321 and we know where it is. You're gonna simply go in, you're gonna put in janitorial and you're gonna hit set sources sought. You have to, normally you don't have to sign in to Sam. You just simply go to where I'm gonna show you again. Now, this is the part you wanna pay attention to. Sources sought is a, it, it's one of the, it's like a gold mine. A contracting officer is looking to put together a bid solicitation, but they're not sure they're gonna have anyone that's gonna respond. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna put it out here and then they're going to look at who responds. Most of the time, if you respond, you're either going to win the, the award outright with no bidding, or you're going to be one of the ones that they put on what we call the preferred vendor list, where every time they have a source of thought, they're looking at you. Now, what you will receive tomorrow is an outline of what you want to put in your source of thought letter. I have a template for you. So that way you can customize it, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. But this tells you all the information. They give you everything you need. This is about market research. Um, they talk about you know, re responding. You wanna respond no later than May 30th. They tell you all the information you need, the specs, you wanna download everything. And they give that you can respond to this person, Jeremiah. Everything you need, is here for you, but very few people even know about sources sought, so they miss golden opportunities to be able to respond in order to win. Because if once they get enough of respond, even if they get one, they normally don't have to put it out to bid, they give it to you. This is one of the things that we did. We did the micro perch for 10,000, we did a lot of sources sought, and we did the simplified acquisition procedure by going to forecast and seeing what was available. So make sure you guys come to sam.gov. You're simply going to make sure that you go to, now this is where you can look for the acquisition where I just took you there. That's on sam.gov. We just got finished looking at that. So it's right there for you. And let's go ahead and go back to Sam. So you can easily do that. And let's go here. See if I can get to it again without having to go back out. And then you can easily let's see, is this Sam? There we go. So, also, I'm going to show you. I, I don't know if any of you guys know about the grants. I'll show you that in a minute. And then I'm going to show you one more on usaspending.gov. And then we're going to go to another place where I'm going to show you where expiring contracts. And then we're going to go to the bid platform just to look at some bids to see if anyone sees one in their area, we can jot that down as well. So the first thing are micro purchases. You can go to the forecast and you can send emails to the different agencies. You can go to sources sought, big place for getting the um, no bids. Having that introduction letter ready and then that's what you're gonna send when you do the forecast. But you're gonna send the sources Excuse me, I have a specialized source of thought that I personally use to make it work for me that I'm going to give to you that you can tweak. So are there any questions so far on the two ways you're going to find micro purchases we talked about, simplified acquisitions are pretty much the same way, and then we've got our sources sought. And I'm going to show you the last one, which is expiring contracts. I love expiring contracts because I know when they're going to expire and I'm going to reach out to that contracting officer um, or I'm going to reach directly out to the agency who sometimes can get your foot in the door better than anything else because they're the end user of the product. So the contracting officer is like the connection. You can get, you kind of push them to the side and say, I want to start building a relationship with that agency directly. And that's another way you can get a lot of contracts without bidding. So are there any questions at all on micro purchases, simplified acquisition procedures, how to go to acquisition.gov and look at forecasts or any questions on, I'm gonna send you the source of sought, or are there any questions on what is the source of sought and what is its purpose? So there's no questions at all, great. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna make sure that we know all about our Ozdaboos. So let's go to see if I can, so that's our, our source of thought. Here is a list of our Ozdaboos. This is, Ozdabu is probably one of the best connections ever. They have a lot of events. They are the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. You're automatically a disadvantaged business, a small disadvantaged, it's called self-certified. Within SAMS, it asks you about being a disadvantaged business. So I hope you guys are going back to your SAMS, making sure you've checked everything. Because I always tell people, anyone can fill out SAMS. But there's certain things I'm showing you that makes it compliant. There's certain things that are going to make you stand out. So if you're unsure about your SAMS, please make sure you go back and look at it tomorrow and make sure that the micro purchase and all the um, credit card is checked off. And also you want to make sure that you are, at, you are actually a certified, it's called self-certified small disadvantaged business. Now the Ozibu, here's a list. You're going to simply go to, just take a photo of this. And once again, these are agencies that you can click on to. Sometimes the link works, sometimes it doesn't. We're gonna click on to one and this one works. So this is the Veteran Affairs, Ozdabu. They're there to help you. They're gonna have what you need to do uh, when it comes to reaching out to the Ozdaboos. It talks about doing business with them um, for VA veterans and entrepreneurs. But their whole purpose, their government agency, is to help you get contracts. Now, this, again, is a, is a connection, a network. Sending them introduction letters, letting them know that you're available is another way that they will start to make the dots connect and they can start introducing you. Because it's all about who you know and doing some research and having the right verbiage when you're sending out these letters to the government. So that's the way you want to make sure that you go to the Ozdaboos and find them. There's a whole list of them, Health and Human Services. Here it is right here. You can, you know, once again, they've got the programs, small businesses, um, support programs for supporting small businesses. Everything you need is out there. This is a big one that utilizes us. Very, very big one. So all the agencies are there. Um, let's try Homeland Security. So Homeland Security right here, they're a big one of ours for uh, janitorial. So everything we need right here, what do you need to do to get involved? All the things you need. If you go down a little bit further, I'm quite sure they have things in here for small businesses. Um, everything you need, they've got right here. So start going to these Ozdaboos, doing your introduction letters. This is another way you can win no bids. Any questions on the Ozdaboos? Okay, so now let's go to the federal procurement data system. So we're gonna go to, I'm quite sure you guys are familiar with usaspending.gov. Is there anyone that's not familiar with usaspending.gov? Okay, all of you guys have seen, because um, I do this one a lot. So with the usaspending.gov, you know you're just gonna simply come, we can come right here, we can click off fiscal year 2021, we can put in the keyword, which we can put in janitorial, uh, janitorial services, which I already have populated here. We submit the search. We go into our categories and we're able to see what agency from the highest to the lowest that uses us. So you can hover over and you can see the detailed information. As of today, over 3,344,518,000,000 you know, that's where they are with giving janitorial contracts. So if I were to start looking at the Ozdaboo, I would go to the Ozdaboo for Health and Human Services. I would make sure I go to the forecast for Health and Human Services, and I would make sure I was writing those introduction letters as early as uh, next week. So we know that they are one of our main ones. Most everyone has, that's what I love about it. Almost all of us have a health and human service, Medicaid, Medicare, child aid, all of that's health and human services. So when you look under the sub agencies, it kind of gives you the agencies underneath the main one. And a lot of times you had no idea that this agency was under there, but like, see what I said, Center for Medicaid and Medicare, Social Security, small business, all of these are like sub, sub agencies underneath. 
and the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare, we all have a Center for Medicaid and Medicare. So if there's nothing else you have, you're probably going to have a Veteran Affairs, Social Security Office, and you're going to have a Medicaid and Medicare. They've spent over $2 trillion with us as of right now. They're the number one. So we already know who needs us. These are the people that are going to give you the no bid. 40% are never listed. They're waiting on you. The, the solicitations are in their basket. I've won plenty that way, plenty, millions of dollars in contracts this way. So don't make it hard. Just start doing your work. Are there any questions on the USAspending.gov at all? Okay. Now we're going to go to, this is the F. PDS. Have any, have, have any of you guys utilized this platform at all? Give me a yes if you've utilized this one. Okay, Grianna, I think, yes, you were, you probably, I think we did it or I shared it with you. So no one else has utilized this one. This is a great one. Federal procurement data system has all the information we're looking for. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to fpds.gov and then it's like a Google search. You're going to put in janitorial services or whatever it is you're looking for and hit enter. Let's do it again because I probably timed out. So we're going to put in janitorial services and then we're going to hit enter. When you do that, this is a list of all the agencies for janitorial, the top 10 departments, the top 10 contracting officers or contracting agencies. And then it gives you the top business names that are doing the business the most with these agencies. Over here, over here is where you want to make sure you pay attention. You want to click on to date signed. Once you click date signed, these are, act, these are actual contracts. You then want to go to view. Once you hit view, it's gonna show you the contract. So this contract is a BPA blanket. It's a blanket purchase agreement, which is good. It was approved on the 24th, which was today. And we are looking to see when it's going to close. So this one will close on 0430. This contract is valued at $27,000. And we know what department and everything, we know this one is the embassy in DC where I am. I did a lot of embassy work. And then you wanna make sure you come right here so you can see what type of contract it is. This is a firm fixed price. We're looking for a micro purchase or a SAP. That's what we're looking for. Now, what you can do is you can play with it a little bit and you can try and see if you can find one in it talks about the entity zip code, which is your business. But the goal, they've got contract types and they've got agency code and the agency name. Now, what I will do for you is I'll cut the, learn, the learning curve and I will see if on tomorrow I can find it where it's going to either give us a list of all the micro purchases and SAP. Why do we want that? Because if you come here, if let's go back and view. If you come here and you view it, there are going to be a couple. Now, this right here, they're a small disadvantaged business. They're, they don't have anything else. You can see they're not veteran owned. They're not 8A. They're not a hub zone. We can look and see exactly what they are right in this area with their, with their um, economic data. That's important because you want to look and see if they have any advantage over you. This particular contract was for $500,000. And let's see what type it was. So this one was a fixed price. That means they had to bid. What we wanna find is a simplified acquisition procedure. So right here, it says full and open competition. That means that they had to compete. This was not a, not a no bid, but what you can do is even if you don't find one that's a no bid, you can come here because it lets you know exactly when this contract expired. Now, the reason why this one's out of date is because we didn't hit the date. But if I go back here 
and I hit, make sure you have to hit date sign, that's gonna put them in order. That means it's gonna give us the, the, the one that started today. So if I view this contract, it should be today's date or somewhere in there, which is date signed May 24, 2022. You wanna look to see when this contract is gonna end and it will tell us that the end date and all the information we need to find is right here. So we'll know when it ends, we know when it, when it was signed. You wanna find a contract that looks like it's gonna end within the next 90 days, maybe four months out. And you wanna start looking to see who is the contracting agency, which is the Department of, and it has the name of the department, Department of, it should be the Department of Defense. So when it just says Department of, it's usually DOD because this is for the US um, embassies. But what you wanna do is then you want to reach out to the Department of Defense. It's gonna list the type of department it is. And you wanna make sure that you reach out to the various departments. And this is where you're gonna do the same thing. If this contract is looking to get ready to expire, then all you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure you send that agency, that's the end user, an introduction letter, letting them know what you can do for their agency. And they will contact the contracting officer. And at the very least, they may ask for a capability briefing. You and the contracting officer and the end, the end user, which is the agency, will all be there together. And you could easily win the contract without bidding. At the very least, you know when the contract is coming up for renewal, send them an email and let them, they're going to send you information when the contract is ready to bid on. But you can always tell what kind of contract it is if you go down to the bottom, because like I said, that's where it's gonna have, where it says open competition or closed competition, but it's gonna tell you exactly what it is. So this is the actual contract. So like we said, this one's not gonna end until 2023. So you might start in 27,000, it's a real cute little contract, a little first one. You can find out where, where they're gonna perform it, which is on F Street, right around the corner from my office. Um, it gives you all the information. You can go down to the bottom, and like I said, you can tell what kind of contract it is. So this one is, there is no subcontractor, but all the information is right there. So you can see if it's a fixed, if you have to bid on it, um, anything you need to know is going to be on. This is the actual contract. This is how you can find expiring contracts. You can find contracts from previous, if you're looking to do a bid. This is how you can find that contract. So you can see what they bid. Every contract that you're going to bid on, they have to give you the previous contract. All you have to do is ask the contracting officer. They have to. It's, it's public information. If they don't have one, if it's the first time, they will give you a similar contract because you want to know what the bid price is in order to know how to bid. That's where a lot of people lose out. They have no idea what to bid. You don't have to guess. It's all right there for you. One thing about the government, it's transparent. They have to tell you, as opposed to commercial. So that's what I love about the government. And when I was in the military, I liked that part. So I want you guys to get very familiar with the federal procurement data system, because that is one of the main ones that you're going to use in order to make sure that you are learning how to bid. So now, before we go on to show share the screen and look for actual bids. Are there any questions on the three ways you're gonna find no bids? Do, do you guys feel comfortable? You can take your, your mute off. Do you feel comfortable that you know how to find one? Give me, give me some feedback. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Okay, so um, you said we would find out, say we, it's the Department of Defense and then we would send an email. How would we find the like right email to send it to? We just go so what you're going to do is you're going to go to the OSDEBU of the Department of Defense. Remember I showed you the OSDEBU yeah. sheet? Mm -hmm. So you're going to go to the OSDEBU. Every agency has an OSDEBU. So you can start with the OSDEBU or one better is, okay, good. So one better is you can come here and you can go to your procurement. What was it? Procurement Center Representative. So everyone has a procurement center representative. They're part of the government. And you're gonna simply come here and you're gonna find your area. And you're gonna look for your state and their, their number and email. If you can't find the agency, you find that contract, you can't find the agency, you come here, they will give you the agency's email address. 
Okay, that's, that's okay. Good. Okay, perfect. Right. So everything you need is kind of like a, 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 a matrix. It fits together. So are there any other questions before I guys show you my um, bid screen, how to get micro purchases? We know what, what main agencies do micro purchases. We know about the SAP, simplified acquisition. We know what we need to do to do that. I've shown you how to find the um, forecast. We know the one main one is sources sought. You're going to receive that source of sought letter tomorrow along with this recording. You can look at it again and again and again. Um, I know I go rather quickly because I, I like to try to cram as much as I can in that time frame. But these are the things that a lot of people don't do, especially that source of sought and finding expiring contracts, two big ways to find contracts in your area. We know they were working on our differentiators, so they were ready for that. So in the chat, before I share with you my screen, is there anyone that does not feel confident when they get off of this workshop that they do not know how to go about finding a no bid? So let me get some yeses if you feel comfortable. Let me see. Let me get some energy here. Let's put some yeses. I either need a yes or a no. So let me know. Let me hear some yeses. Yes, 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 yes. I'm good. I'm confident. Okay. Miss Cynthia. Okay. I'm ready. Miss Cynthia, how are you feeling? Oh, Tabitha, yeah, you just came, so I'm, I'm quite sure that you're uh, not. So you'll receive the recording, um, Tabitha, because we've gone through it, and so that way. So Cynthia, how are you feeling? Cynthia, Cynthia, because you've, you've been with me for a minute. How are you feeling, Cynthia? Maybe Cynthia's gone. Okay. So, Miss, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm, I'm in the midst of driving. So, thank oh, you. Oh, okay. All right, Cynthia. Okay. All right. Just wanted to check on you. Um, so, anyone else have any questions? I know, um, Tabitha, you just came because we went through the three ways. And so, now what we're going to do is you guys will receive the recording within 24 hours and the other, um, the sources sought template, the introduction and the slideshow presentation for your capability briefing. So you'll, I'll make sure that I include all three of those. So we're gonna end with me sharing my screen. Now remember, any of you that can't find the agency, you don't know who, where to send it, you're gonna simply come to your, your um, procurement officer. So it's just find your area. All the areas are right here. If it says vacant, then you can go to the one before that or the one after it. So that's for area number two, area number three, and then we go on with area number four. So we've got them all right here. So that's area number, um, let's see, that's area number three, and then we have area number four and five. So, all right. Now, this is who we use, which is bidsearch.com. So let's kind of look and see if there's anything for you guys as far as bidding. So we know what to do for no bidding. Let's see if there's anything for bidding. And I'll just share my screen with you. And one of the best, um, I'll, I'm gonna come back, but one of the best grants is the Amber Grant. I don't know, I put it on the, on the um, Amber Grant. We've had people win. It is a very simple, here's the application that they look for. They want you to give their name, your email address, your business, your website. That's optional if you don't have a website, but we really want you to have one. They want you to tell them about your story. What's your story? I want you guys to craft a story. Your story is why, how'd you end up here? I started out when I was five years old, knowing I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I went into, I went to school. I went into the military, but I never lost that because I knew that I wanted to be able to, to write when and how and when I want to control. I'm a freedom person. I like freedom. So after I served 12 years in the military, I then went to Atlanta to open my first boutique. I liked it, but it really didn't have the money that I was looking for. I was sitting at the mall in Florida when I moved there from Atlanta and this guy walked in and I had this little book that said, the best home-based business is to start. He comes up to me and he says, I've got a great one. I'm like, what's that? He said, janitorial. I'm like, janitorial. I'm thinking, ugh, you know, janitors, are you kidding me? You know, I've gone to accounting. I'm not doing that, you know, that little snooty thing. And when that man got through talking to me, I was like, where's, where's the dirt? I'm ready. And I realized that janitorial is so much more than just that. That's the image, you know, dirty, nasty. No, it's a multi 
billion dollar industry with so many opportunities from consulting to teaching to selling supplies. You can have a supply and equipment. There's so many things to it. And from there, I started, I opened my own um, janitorial company, did it myself, left my job, started doing it part-time, then full-time. And then I hired my first crew and I loved it so much. Then I started wanting to teach other people what I learned over the last 26 years. So that's my story. They want to know the real deal. So give them some feeling when you have your story. So everyone should have a story crafted, just like your introduction letter. Everyone wants to know what's your story. And then they want you to tell them in great detail what you're going to do with the money if you win between the 10 and 25,000. Every application is $15 and that's it. I highly recommend you doing the Amber Grant if you need money or if you are Amber with this young lady. Her story is she ended up catching having cancer before she got started. She was a, a um, Black young lady and um, she unfortunately died. But since then, People have loved what she stood for, and that's how the Amber Grant was founded. So kudos to her and everyone that's involved. So now let's go back to look at these uh, bids real quickly, and then I will get you guys on your way. Level Up to Success is one of my businesses for um, it's, it's for doing uh, different types of business, but it's one of my favorite ones as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, since we're a little bit pushed for time, I am going to take a pen and paper. I want you guys to tell me your states and I will send you, um, hopefully we may have like three bids in your area. You can see right here, I love this platform. We can put all of the, um, everything as far as, let's see, okay. So we've got Colorado, okay, we've got Cleveland. Okay, I know Cleveland, okay. We have Michigan. So Brianna, so I can make sure I write down you guys' names. I got Keisha and I have, yeah, New York, Buffalo. And, um, Tabitha, do you have, let's see, let's see, I don't see Tabitha, so I've got one, okay, Memphis, and Cynthia's in Tennessee as well, so I know where you are, Cynthia, in Tennessee, so okay, that should be everyone that I have, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to your email boxes. I'm gonna look for around three of them in your area. Um, okay, so I remember, yes, Chica is VA, all right. So we've got the agencies here. Um, I have get nothing from BidSearch, but it's one of my favorite platforms. There's like so many you can use, but I love it because everything is here. I can put in the exact date. I can put it out as far as I want. I put the due date because that's what's important to me. I love it because it will allow me to put the state, like right now I have the state of Virginia in, there's 101 active in the state of Virginia. If I find one I'm interested in, like this one was due on 524, which is today, I simply click onto there and it gives me the file folders and I simply download them and it tells me exactly what I need. This is the drawing for it. And so I can just download that and that lets me know exactly what I need. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Nashville, gotcha, Cynthia. Um, I love this because it allows me to look at anything I want and it is fantastic and easy to use. So this would be the actual uh, bid for those of you that hadn't seen one, this is it. So. This is how you look at it. it talks about what the bid needs, what the bid numbers. It needs to be there by the today or yesterday, the 24th of November. Two talks tells you how to do it, and then simply you would fill in. Probably has a bid sheet right here. Now this one's a little bit different because they want you to write some things in there. So that's why I always tell people pay attention to the bids. Some are a lot easier than others. So this one 
you're writing your years, your data sheet, years in business. And then I think they have something like here with, you know, what's your consistency? What, how are you going to use your cleaning crew? And then this is where you're going, this is where you're going to track your employees numbers. And then it would continue on, well, 23, 23. So I'm quite sure it has the actual place you're going to put the price. But yeah, here we go right here. Hourly rate. So this is how simple it is. They want to know, and I think it's like a three or four year contract. You're going to put the amount of money and then you're going to put the per hour that you're going to pay. And you're going to simply, you know, they have like a pre-conference and they tell you everything you need. So when people say, I don't know what a bid looks like, this is an actual bid. Um, this is a bid. We've done quite a few of those uh, yesterday for a couple of people. But what I will do is I will look for if there aren't any in your area, then I will say that we didn't have any available in your area. But I will let you know something either way. But I want you guys to really work on it. Um, I'm making sure I take a note of what I'm sending you, which is going to be the sources sought letter. Sources sought letter. I'm sending you the PowerPoint presentation on the capability briefing. And I am sending you the introduction letter. And I want you guys to really work hard on coming up with differentiators. So are there any questions at all on anything? I know you came a little late. Um, Tabitha, but you'll get this within 24 hours tomorrow. So you guys will get this within 24 hours, the replay. Um, any other questions at all? Okay, let's see. When will there be a go over the when will there be a workshop to calculate how to calculate prices? If you guys don't mind, I can give you that right now. You guys have a couple of minutes. Give me a guess if you just want me to go over pricing real quick. If not, you can go ahead and and um Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, it won't take me but a second. When you're calculating prices, one thing about the government is you're always going to know the square footage. So I'm going to stop sharing. You're always going to know the square footage. So let's say we start with, get my little calculator here. Let's say we start with 25,000 square feet. We know our square footage. Once we know our square footage, we then are going to figure out how, what's the man hours does it take to normally clean something? The average man hours for one person who's average to clean something within an hour is anywhere from 2,300 square feet to 3,000 square feet. So I would go with the low end. So we know we've got 25,000 square feet and we know that we divide that into 2,300 we know that it's going to take 10 hours and 86, so we just round up to 11 hours. It's going to take someone 11 hours to do 25,000 square feet. Any questions on that? How I got that? You're dividing it and you're rounding up. Now, you're not going to have one person work 11 hours, so you're probably going to have maybe three people. You're going to divide it three, 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 four, 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 but you know. Next, you need to figure out what is the frequency. So we're going to say it's going to be four days a week. So we know we're looking at 11 man hours times four. That means we need 44 man hours a week. We know we need 44. Now we want to figure out where we're going to pay them. So that's where you want to know, depending on the kind of contract, you may have to do what you call wage determination. It will tell you there is a certain amount. I know I've had contracts. I had to pay them in D.C., $18 an hour, $20 an hour, but they tell you that before you take the contract. So make sure. Now, this formula works for government or commercial. The only difference with commercial is you normally don't know what the square footage is. You got to figure it out on your own with either an app or a device that you can print, you can push to the wall, and it gives you the square footage of that space. But with government, you never, never not know what the square footage is. They always know. So now we know that it's 44 um, man hours for that week. Now we're going in because we know it's for a month. We always want to do four times two. There's more, there's three months that there's 31 days. So you're going to go times 4.2. So we know it's 184.80. Some bids want you to figure for the week. Most of them want you to figure for the month. So we know that we're going to spend 184.8, round up 185 man hours. We know. We know what we're, we know. Now we have to figure out what we're going to pay. We know the square footage. 
the frequency. Now we figure out the pay. I'm paying $15 an hour. So we go times 15. I know right now I'm at $2,772 just for my basic labor. Now I need to add in my taxes. The average tax is anywhere from 12 to 15. Payroll taxes. That is your Social Security, your, your, you know, your Medicaid, your, your Medicare, your Social Security. I think um, your Medicaid and Medicare and Social Security comes up to, I think like one is, I think Medicare, Medicaid, I forget which one is, like 4.2 or one 6.2, um, one's 3 point something or two. But together they come up to around 12% because you have to put in unemployment tax, Social Security, all of that's called payroll tax together. So on the safe side, I normally times it by 12 by 15%. I want to be safe. So I would take my 2,772 and I would times it by 15%. That's $415 that I know I'm adding to my labor. So that comes up to $3,187.80. Always round up. Now I know I'm at $3,187 or $88. Now I've got all my labor. I know what my labor costs are. So once I know that I have to pay at least $3,187, the rest of it is going to be my overhead. Your overhead should be 30% of every bid. That includes your uniforms, your insurance, your cell phone, whatever it takes you to run that business. The reason why most people are always doing the cleaning is because they do not add in the taxes and they don't add in the overhead. I'm doing a video tomorrow on illegal subcontracting, and there are people that are getting build millions of dollars because you're getting sued. If a janitorial company figures out that you are, there's no way you could be paying your employees because they know what you're getting paid in that building, they can call the Department of IRS and the Department of Revenue and they can put in a complaint against you because they know that you're paying your subcontractors and not taking out taxes. Everyone loses now, has everyone done it? Absolutely. I'm not going to sit here and say that I did it. Yeah, I did it in the beginning because I didn't think I could afford it. But when I realized the, the price I was going to pay, then I realized it wasn't worth it. But I did it for at least, first I cleaned by myself. Then I had a person that I had as a subcontractor, but he was an employee because I gave him the equipment. I gave him the supplies. Everyone says, even accounting um, accountants are telling people to say that they're employees. They're not employees. They're, they're not subcontractors. They're employees. If they do not have a business license like you and they don't have insurance, they're employees, period. You can wrap it up any way you want, but they're employees. And why do we like using them? Because we don't have to pay what I'm talking about. So I can bid lower. If I don't have to pay $415 in payroll taxes, I can bid lower and I can get the bid. But then there's other companies that are getting pissed at this because they did it a lot in Florida where I was and it wasn't fair because you're paying taxes, but you're losing these bids because you're doing it the right way. But everyone normally starts out. I don't know anyone that didn't start out at least one month of saying someone was a sub when they really weren't. So don't think you're alone because I'm, I'm being transparent. I know I did. And looking back, it was just grace of God that nothing happened because you don't have, you know, you don't have insurance on them. They're just kind of going at going at it. But it's not worth it as soon as you get things together. Work hard at being able to do it the right way because there's enough profit out there for you to do it. So now you're going to put your 30%. So I've got 3,187 or 88 times 30%. That's going to be $956. That's going to be my overhead. If I add that, that's 4,144. Now, this is where you get to decide. Profit is money that comes back to you. I always did anywhere from 20% and I never went lower than 10. That's where you want to decide. The reason why I went to 10 is because I was looking at getting an office depot and I got all of them. So I didn't mind giving them a little bit less. I didn't mind taking a little bit less because I got all of them. So it was worth it. So you get to decide, is the contract that you really want? Are you going to go get more business? That kind of lets you know what you need. But the number one number you need to figure is that labor. Everything else you can kind of wiggle with. I wouldn't wiggle too much with the overhead because um, that's what keeps you from doing all the work. And then the profit, you add your 20%. So you would go 20%. And that would give you, so we got 4144 times 20%. That's going to be another $828. So this bid could be easily 4972 uh, 4972 So depending on the condition of the building, uh, everything else, we're cleaning four, four weeks, 
um, four days out of the week, uh, paying someone whatever you want to pay them, adding that all in. Um, I think I added their amount of money. I might have skipped that part, but you want to add in their the part you're paying them like eight, nine dollars. So it's probably going to be a little bit more if you add in. And I think I probably skipped that, but you know pretty much what you're going to what you're going to pay. So is there anyone here? I know I went over that very, very quickly, but that's the gist of it. Is there anyone here that has a question on the formula for bidding? It's just that simple. 50% normally is going to be your labor. 30% is going to be your overhead. 20% is going to be your profit. And that 20% you can wiggle with depending on how much you want it. But already have in your mind the lowest you're going to go. That way, if you get a little bit greedy, you're not taking stuff with 5% and 3%, which can easily happen when you get excited about a bid. Um, can I send you guys the formula? Absolutely. So this, you'll get the recording of, of this, and you can look at that, and then I'll send the formula for you as well. So that way, you know what your formula is. And if you do this, you're not going to leave money on the table, and you're going to feel comfortable and confident because you already know what your formula is. And if you use that formula, you are going to feel very comfortable with this as well. So that's the goal. Okay, ladies, I am going to see if there's any other questions. Um, let's see, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for being here. I'm always excited to share because I have been so fortunate. I just got back from Jamaica last week and the only reason I was able to do that, uh, thank you, Ms. Keisha. Um, I was only able to do that because of the how blessed I am with the business that I've been able to do. Like I said, I do a thing called Level to Success, and it's just all kinds of businesses that are leveling up to be able to be successful. So I've been fortunate to have several businesses that have done well, and I know you guys are going to do well as, as well. Um, I'm thinking of doing like I have a, a school platform. I'm thinking of doing just a general membership of like $20 a month and put workshops like these in there. And that way you're not having to pay for individual and there's no contract. But if you are a part of the membership, then you would get the workshops and all that. And um, so if anyone be interested in that, then maybe you can shoot me an email, letting me know what you would want in the membership, uh, like the bidding formulas and things like that. That way it helps you guys really scale your business. So if someone is interested in um, that, I may do that. I've gotten, I've got in my other things. So I might do that here. It would be, like I said, like $20 a month for all kinds of things that I would put inside of the membership. So I would put that together and then you would get access to it and kind of get a chance to do it. Well, thank you, Miss Brianna. So if there are no other questions, I'm gonna let you guys get to your dinner, your children, your family and all of that. And I, I'm just, you know, so glad that you guys are here. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next workshop. I usually do one once a quarter on different subjects. So the next one will be on commercial and all the ways to find contracts and commercial. So I do two for government and two for commercial. So I look forward to seeing you guys again soon and look for the, um, the, the, the information and the replay within 24 hours. Take care. Bye-bye.